Alright, I'm going to do an iPad 4 TriStar repair here. Uh, port of pal shows 0 0.08 amps. Uh, iTunes does not recognize it. I don't know. Uh, the guy just told me it was TriStar. He said TriStar got hot when he uh, powered it up. I'm not 100% convinced it's TriStar, but iTunes doesn't see it. It could be uh, maybe a NAND error or something like that. But uh, And then on top of that, the home button connector is busted. So I can't really do a DFU. Uh, and I don't really want to fix the home button connector until TriStar is repaired. <laughs> uh, right? Uh, okay, so so the iPad 4 um, has this thick black waterproof tar around it, holding it in place. So that's really the biggest challenge. It's it's a, it's a pain in the ass to do. Um, but the guy, you know, as I, I told the guy no about 20,000 times, and uh, he said the customer wants to pay. The customer wants to pay. Wants to get it fixed. So. There we are. <laughs> I don't. I don't even like doing these things, but uh, you know, somebody wants to give you money, I guess, right? Um, is it going to be worth the money? Maybe we'll see. Because uh, sometimes I replace these things and it still doesn't work, and then we're really screwed. So just note that the iPad 4 uses the 1608A1 chip, okay? And and um, Smax is not going to show you where the A1. Uh, pin is. Uh, just at, in this orientation, just note, note that the dot is closest to the corner here, okay? Echo. Trigger soldering on. Alright, so what I'm going to use, what I'm going to do is use my um, JBC uh, micro pencil. This thing is far superior um, than the um, Hakko, than the Hakko uh, micro pencil. My, the Hakko micro pencil really sucks. This thing, the tip is actually so strong on it that it actually really works really well. Um, so you really just you don't want to push down on the board because you don't want, you you don't really want to break the traces on the board. Um, you can also use a hot air gun, alright? So basically you just kind of be, be very gentle with it, alright? Don't push down on the board, otherwise there, you see these see these traces right there? You don't want to break those traces, otherwise you are screwed. You just want to get just enough to scrape away. And another challenge is going to be getting the chip off without disturbing any of these chips, these here, which uh, inevitably you're going to probably do. Everything comes away with it, flies everywhere because this thick tar stuff, which is also on the 6S and 6S Plus, are a real pain in the arse. And you know, if you, you know, and then you're going to spend a lot of time putting that shit together so the more time you spend getting rid of this black shit the less time you will spend putting it back after you rip them off and uh, they separate every which way so so here's what I do right there just just nice and easy don't push too hard And just a little bit, just like that, all right? So now I'm gonna heat the mother out of it, and hopefully pull this chip away without ripping any pads, all right? Let's change my tip to the four millimeter. All 
Okay, so I got a four millimeter tip here. I hate this damn amp scope. It just keeps dropping down on me. All right. So here we go. I'm gonna heat this mother. Do this. 415 and six. That's what I have it at. Really hate this black tar shit. They put the black tar on it to prevent water from getting to it, but the chip fails, so it's like kind of pointless. Because the chip will fail before the water gets to it, right? So when you lift, you, you really just want to kind of lift. Yeah, okay, see so it's already, see the solder is pretty much already melted, you can kind of feel it. It's really just the black stuff holding it, there you go, okay. So, there you go, no rip pads. Now, now, fun part will be getting that crap off of it. So, I'm going to use my uh, big tip for that one. I still got my Hako here. So I didn't disturb, oh, I disturbed this one. That's the only one I disturbed, so that's going to be easy because that's a bigger one. Uh, thank God. So let's just, uh, this is just the dry iron here. And I'm just going to kind of go around it. And and uh, you can put some, you know what, let's put some solder, let's put some flux on it. Just so that, I don't know if the pads are, anyway, so let's just. I don't want to rip any pads, basically. So you get, basically got to get all the black stuff off of it. Get it as flat as possible so you can put the new stuff on. All right. Being delicate here because I don't really want to disturb any of these components, nor do I want to rip that because it's going to cost a lot of time. All right, so that looks pretty good. Um, let's clean this mother up. That looked pretty good, doesn't it? Uh, 
Uh, let's put this component back real quick first. And then we will go with the rest of it. This this may be, you know what, I may add, just add this repair on from now on. Uh, somebody's willing to pay for it, I will do it because... By the way, these JBC tips uh, tweezers are superior. Far, far superior than Hakos, man. Oh my gosh. Night and day. Night and day. Night and day. With that said, this thing's loose. So, I need to fix that. You guys can't see it, but it's a hex nut set screw. Okay, there you go. Alright, that's tight. That's loose too. But yeah, this uh nano this nano system is just ridiculous. This this nano system is ridiculous. The JBC nano system. Hands down. I mean the micro pencil is actually usable, you know the uh the Hakko ones are unusable because they, they don't they don't heat. You can get knife tip for it, but they're not very good. So let me just uh, clean that up just a little bit. Looks like it's like a little bit of black stuff right there. So I just want to get rid of that because I want the chip to lay as flat as possible. Um, okay. So, I'm just going to tin the pads, and I'm going to do that by using my... Sorry about that. Pause it. Alright, so I'm just going to try to tin this. Tin these, uh... These pads here, all right. I, I do have a knife tip, which may work better. Or I might even want to use a bigger. You know what? Let's try this. There you go. That works. All right, I think we're good. So let's clean this up with the Q-tip. Put our new 1608A1 on there, and we'll see how good it is. All right, I think we're good. All right, so let's go. I just restocked on 1608A1. A, yeah, 1608A1. So 1608A1, okay. I don't do a whole lot of these repairs. Uh, all right. Let me just kind of heat it just a little bit. Just like that. And then I'm going to get my chip out.
Don't forget the dot to the corner. And this will be the easy part. This little piece of all right. So you just want to heat it just a little bit so that it holds, and then you can flux. You can flood it with flux and just let it uh, seed itself. So let it cool and we are ready for testing phase. Make sure we didn't melt anything. Nothing there. Not, not a whole lot on this side either, so. All right, I think everything looks good, right? Looks pretty good. All right, so let's test it. Pause. So that didn't work. Um, I was getting the same result. 0.8 amps on the quarter pal. Uh, this video is really about changing the TriStar, so I'm gonna. Just to kind of tell you where I'm going to go from here, but uh, this video is not going to include where I'm going from here. Uh, so that was the TriStar repair on an iPhone 4, iPad 4. Um, after I finished it, plugged it in, 0.8 amps, and then I finally decided to do some short testing. And uh, I actually felt around first, and this puppy right here was getting uh, really, really hot. All right. And VCC main is on this side, I think. Maybe this side. I'm not sure. But anyways, uh, there's essentially a short on VCC main. Yes. And I looked around the entire board, and I don't see any capacitor that is jacked up. My guess is that it's probably PMIC. So after I... Uh, did this, I contacted the customer and the customer said this guy took it to the Philippines and it died over in the Philippines, right? So my guess is that he probably plugged in some sort of charger that is not um, maybe a high voltage charger or something like that that fried this thing. That's my guess. Um, because this is naturally a short anyway, so I don't, I mean, even though it gets hot, I don't think this is the actual problem. I just don't see how it can short the ground. You know, because it's really just a coil of water wire in there. Uh, my guess is that it's probably PMIC, but PMIC, look at it, it's encased in black shit. And uh, just, you know, if you get down to the point where you have to replace the PMIC, then you're pretty much uh, grasping, you know. And But this uh, logic board is probably at the end of the line here, and I may give this attempt. I'm not really sure yet. Uh, I've sworn off of. Uh, doing any more PMIC repairs ever because the results are not good.
and it's a big, big waste of time. But since I've already replaced this puppy, and uh, I have, it's either gonna be 150 or 150, 200 bucks, or whatever, versus 25 bucks. So at this point, it may be worth it to just do it, just give it a shot, see if it's worth it or not, right? So I, 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 I just picked a cap here, and that's why it looks a little bit yellowish. But anyways, uh, I'm going to stop here with this video and uh, maybe continue another video with a short on BCC main uh, iPad 4. So, there you have it.